Let's start off with a case. Mrs. Okamoto is a 72-year-old female with congestive heart failure, COPD, hypertension, and type 2 diabetes. At 2 a.m., she calls for help because she's short of breath. Paul Sock says that her O2 sat is 85% on room air, but this improves to 94% after you sit her up in bed and give her two liters of nasal cannula. She denies chest pain. You look over her medications and note that she has no allergies. Vital signs on nasal cannula now look within normal limits. Her heart sounds okay, but you hear some crackles in her lung bases. She has bilateral, lower extremity pitting edema that extends to her knees. You review her weights and notice that she's gained about 5 pounds over the last week. What is your assessment and recommendation? Does she have acute decompensated heart failure, and will you recommend a chest x-ray and furosemide? Or does she have a COPD exacerbation, and will you recommend a chest x-ray and... So by now some of you are thinking, Dr. Wedgie, this is a talk on heart failure. So obviously the answer is heart failure. This is a waste of my time. Who cares? Well, you should care about heart failure. It's a common problem. About 5.7 million adults in the United States have heart failure, which is similar to the number of patients with Alzheimer's. And heart failure is a deadly problem. About half of all people who develop heart failure die within five years of diagnosis. About 5.7% of people who are admitted to the hospital for heart failure are readmitted within 30 days. So heart failure patients need your help. The doctors need your help too. We're not here all the time, so you're our eyes and ears in the nursing home. You're going to be the ones who catch the patients who are getting sick, not Dr. Uechi. That guy can't even catch Pokemon. So how do you catch early signs of heart failure? Well, it helps to know a little bit about what heart failure is. Your heart is a pump. It squeezes blood to the rest of your body. When the pump doesn't work, blood backs up. And the blood that your heart receives comes from your lungs and from your veins, so that's where it gets stuck. When you have too much fluid in your lungs, you start getting short of breath. Here's a very scientific and expensive representation of the human vascular system. When you put water into it, where does the water go? Well, to the bottom. Duh, that's just gravity. But that's also why when you have too much fluid, it tends to build up in your feet and legs. Now watch what happens when you lie down. The fluid gets redistributed to the rest of your body, which means that fluid goes from your legs into your lungs. That's why patients with heart failure are often unable to lie down flat and have worse symptoms at night. We say that patients with too much fluid are volume overloaded or hypervolemic. How do you tell if a patient is hypervolemic? That's actually really hard. Unfortunately, there's no single vital sign, physical exam finding, lab test, or imaging test that can single-handedly say whether a patient is hypervolemic. That said, we'd like you to focus on a few things. Is the patient short of breath or hypoxic? Does the patient have difficulty breathing while lying down? Is the patient gaining weight? Does the patient have edema? Unfortunately, there are many causes of shortness of breath and edema that have nothing to do with heart failure. But if you can keep an eye out for this constellation of symptoms, you're likely on the right track. So how do we fix this? Well, in general, if you have too much fluid in your body, you need to pee it out. We use diuretics for that, and the most common one you'll see for this purpose is probably furosemide. You pee out the water, there's less of it in your lungs, and you start to feel better. Okay then, Dr. Wedgie. If that's the case, why don't you just put all the patients on big doses of furosemide? Unfortunately, diuretics are dangerous medications. They can do damage to your kidneys, mess up your electrolytes, and make your blood pressure become dangerously low. Too little fluid in your body, hypovolemia, is just as bad as too much. So managing heart failure isn't simple. There's a fine balance between too much fluid and too little fluid. And again, that's why we need your help. The reason why we ask for daily weights on some patients isn't because we're concerned that our patients are getting too fat. 
It's because we need to know whether someone has too much or too little fluid, whether we need to increase or decrease their medications. And again, you play an instrumental role in helping us to determine that. Okay, let's try another case. We have Mr. Tamura, an 80-year-old man with congestive heart failure, COPD, end-stage renal disease on dialysis, and type 2 diabetes. He calls for help at 2 a.m. because he's short of breath and he's having chest pain. You review his medications and note that he has no allergies. Vital signs are notable for tachycardia, hypotension, tachypnea, and hypoxia despite 5 liters of nasal cannula. You notice that he's gained 5 pounds within the last week. He has crackles in his lungs and is edematous. What's your assessment and recommendation? See, this time it's not so simple. Mr. Tamura is really sick. He's actually unstable. Because he has end-stage renal disease, furosemide probably won't work on him because his kidneys don't work. And even if it did work, his blood pressure is really low. I'd recommend sending Mr. Tamura to the hospital. Phew, okay, that's a lot of information. But we're telling you this because we know that you're smart and talented and want to give the best quality care to your patients. So thank you for helping us to protect our patients with heart failure and for everything that you do in the service of others.